What's up, animals? We're coming to you live and hot in this fucking hot, sunny afternoon. It is June the 14th of absolutely December. Whoa. Okay, seriously, come on, man. What are you doing? It is the 5th of June. Coming to you on a Sunday morning. That's when I am recording this. 1.45 a.m. I like to time stamp it just to make it interesting so you know, like, hey, that's when he's doing this. What a freaking, just to give you, like, a little information of, like, what my life is. I'm wearing the goddamn sunglasses because I don't give a crap. I'm in a goddamn hoity-toity suck my cock mood i'm not censoring any of this shit i'm sick of people that suck at podcasting that always don't release their episodes of their own fucking podcast because they go oh i shouldn't have said that they gotta edit it out you know what let's just not put it out you know what i don't want to get can't I don't want to get in trouble because I talk shit about like 50 people that are, I don't know, gatekeepers in this fucking stupid comedy community. They get, oh, I talk shit about a comedy club that fucking sucks. Hope I don't get in trouble. Nobody gives a fuck. I will, dude. I'm not trying to get banned. I just like, dude. If you if you're not gonna, if you don't know what not to say on a podcast, don't do it in the like. Get better at podcasting, and then you won't have to edit it fifty million times. And also, I don't know. Use your brain. Just censor yourself before you even say the goddamn thing. I talk shit on here. I talk mad shit on this podcast. And sometimes it's about specific people. Do I name them? No. That's it. Just don't name them. Who gives a fuck? I will never edit this podcast. And I will never redact anything of my life. I'm not proud of everything I've ever said. I've tweeted some things that are pretty bad. And I've said some things that are even worse. But I've I've dedicated myself to that fucking thing. We're the truth tellers. Comedians are the new philosophers of of the world. We say things that are not meant to be said to be but but need to be said. We speak the truth in an uncut, unfiltered way. Cause we got nothing to lose, man. Oh whoopee ooh, I got banned from some shithole. There's some fucking shithole. Oh, too bad I do. too bad podcasts don't exist. Yeah, as long as podcasts exist and the internet is always exists and Bitcoin always exists, there'll always be somewhere for me to do comedy. So I don't give a fuck if it's not in like in the trendy spotlight coolest places you could do. as long as there's some fucking avenue for me to ream cocksuckers on. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to keep running my mouth. Bo Burnham. Bo fucking Burnham. He made fun of people like me. He's funny. He's funny. That's it. I liked it. I thought it was good. Anyway. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, people... It does suck being a comedian. It fucking sucks because I'm not one of... I don't know. I guess I am starting to become a somebody that does comedy because I did a couple gigs recently, you know, not really. I did a road gig, which I'm very happy that I asked to do because I wasn't offered it. I asked like, hey, man, want me to drive you to your road gig uh, three hours away in my supercar to save you money on gas? And he was like, yeah, so I drove up to fucking Plano, Plano, Texas with some very talented comedians, and I was just happy to be around comics that are not fucking open micers, so I was like, you know what, even if I don't get up, 
uh it's just hey I'm, I'm getting to hang out with open micers and i'm so i'll try not to crash this car and I'll try, I'll just hope that there's no fucking malfunctions or flat tires on this six hour, however long journey, cumulative. But I did get the five, he, uh, Ryan Joseph was very nice enough to give me five minutes. He squeezed me in. So I tried to do my best and it went okay. I did okay. Five minutes. And, and uh, so yeah. But when I got home, there was a fucking nail embedded in the in the fucking tire. Sorry for cursing so much. I'm just kind of like in one of those moods where I have to say the F word every two fucking seconds. Yeah, so there's a f- nail. I, so I did get a flat tire. So fuck Teslas, specifically the one I have with 22-inch wheels that look amazing. They look fucking crazy. They're fucking huge. They're like tractor wheels. But the tires are very sticky, and there's a lot of torque. So the, anytime there's anything on the road, it'll just suck it right in. So I had to get the fucking tire replaced. It wasn't a hassle because they just came over right to my house. Roadside assistance on you know is pretty good. They instantly respond through text. It's very cool. But it costs over $400 to replace a single tire on this extremely expensive car that i i guess shouldn't have bought but hey whatever yolo i'm i'm gonna sell it pretty soon maybe keep it for a couple more months get a couple more flat tires and then i'll try to get some money back on it and use that money for you know things that are less ridiculous like food you know bills but anyway it was a fun experience to drive two of my favorite Austin comics up to a gig and you know they trusted me they trusted me to not be a shitty driver and that says something because they one of them wasn't even wearing a fucking seat belt Hans Kim yeah I'm name dropping I'm dropping the name yes I did a road gig with the great Hans Kim, one of my favorite Austin comedians, and he refused to wear his seatbelt the entire way, both there and back. So I had to drive like a grandma. Not that I was going to like crash if he was wearing a seatbelt. I wasn't going to drive, but I was definitely going to drive a little more aggressively if he was wearing a seatbelt because you never know. If somebody changes into your lane suddenly... You got to fucking break because people drive like assholes. You never know. It didn't happen because I was driving super defensively. But I I asked him, like, can you please put on your seatbelt? He was like, come on, man. You're not going to just drive. Just nothing's going to happen. I was like, you never know. But he didn't. So he put it on for like two seconds and he he fucking slept or whatever. Anyway, uh, he was giving me the business a little bit, which I like because he's cool. He, he called me a bunch of names, whatever, like I, I'm just debating if I should say whatever, what he said to me, because I don't know him that well, and, uh, but I like when comics are like, like break your balls, if they're funny enough to do so, if they're above you in the totem pole, in the pecking order, and they break my balls, yeah, that's fun, that's great, it's like a way to like kind of be friendly, if you're just doing it to somebody that's better than you or whatever, they're not gonna, it's not going to be as fun. Like if some asshole comes up to me and says, oh, you fucking, look at you. You're the, like if they just crack, give me like a fucking jab and, I, and they're not, uh, you know, friends with Joe Rogan, it's going to come off a little different than if it's, you know, somebody I actually respect and who's been doing it as long as me and to a higher degree as me, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So we made it there. We did the gig. That's it. I was barely invited, so I was just happy to be there. I was not invited, in fact. I invited myself by using my, by, by dangling my fucking money in front of their face. I was like, hey, man, I got this Tesla. That's how you say it. You say it with a Z. If you're, yeah, fuck saying Tesla. It's a Tesla. 
No, it's a Tesla, and that's how we got there. And uh, I'm I'm very well, uh, and you know, adjusted to being an asshole who drives a Tesla. Like I I used to be like uncomfortable with that being part of my identity, but now I'm so used to it. I've had one for over a year, so it's like yeah, I have a t big deal. It's a Tesla. Get used, get over it. Um, it's ingrained in my personality. And I am trying to get better at not being a douchebag. I don't even like it. It's like it's like I'm, I want to. I like my Miata way better. Oh my god, my Miata treats me so right. I, it's just like anytime I'm in the Miata, it's like oh I fucking love driving this thing. It, the tires never pop. It's so fucking reliable. Except for when it randomly... Oh, my God. Okay, so to switch subjects, fuck the road gig. It was a wonderful experience, but that's pretty much all there is to say about it. It was just really fun to hang out with comics that I actually kind of think are talented and are going places. And you got you to gotta do that every once in a while. You got to like put yourself out there. Be like, hey, want to hang out? Hey, blah, blah. Suck my cock. I'll, I'll suck yours. You suck mine a little bit. So I went to my first comedy party, like somebody invited me to a party of comedians, that's who comprised the party, so I went there, and I was, the, I was quick, I quickly was like, okay, I'm not in a party mood, I did not do any sets that, went, I did a set where I bombed, so I was like, I'm not in a fucking party mood, but I want to go there anyway to quench to like kind of, you know, get over the fact that I just did a really uncomfortable open mic. So I was like, okay. And I got there and I was like, yeah. So I talked to a few people, no cool people that I want. Like, okay, some of them were people I like. But by cool people, I mean women. Zzz. And I'm not counting women comics because that doesn't count as women. They're just coworkers who you don't want to fuck the only time i'm gonna be excited to be at a party is if there's women talking to me which of course this doesn't happen because i'm not famous and i'm not tall but we'll get more into that later we got a lot to talk about uh so i left the party because i was like okay i've been here long i'm just sitting there <laughs> i'm just sitting there not looking at my phone that's cool so i pulled in i tried pulling an irish goodbye i just left I didn't go through the way I came in. I found, I just walked from the backyards to the, from the side of the house. I walked, you know, you know, I just disappeared. I pulled an Irish goodbye and then I uh, went to my car. And as soon as I got in, uh, the fucking alarm goes off. So it's like, that just ruined the Irish goodbye. There goes that. So I look like an asshole. Very uncool way to leave a party is your car alarm goes off for like way longer than it should because i didn't know how to turn it off i figured it out it was probably only going off for maybe 20 seconds but that's a long time for you to be making that much noise at midnight so i was like well there was that yep i'm the coolest one here so then i got the fuck out of there so that's my first comedy party in Austin. Man, do I feel uncool a lot in this town. I don't know why I would feel, I don't know why I wouldn't. I mean, I'm not that cool. I'm a nerd. I'm a quiet introvert who's not doing anything really that exciting. Like I did kill Tony a couple times. That's it. Anyone could do that though. So whoopee. I don't know. So I got to get more famous, and then it'll be more fun. Because I don't like being not cool. I mean, some people think I'm some people think I'm cool. Like, they go, oh, Timmy Gusto's here. But I don't know. It doesn't, I, I want it to be, it's just like, I don't, I didn't earn it yet. Timmy Gusto is a new identity. I have 15 followers on Instagram. And it's cool to start from scratch as a identity. Because I was going through an identity crisis. It was like, who am I? Uh, Tim Weichselbaum? Tim.com? Tim.com? Uh, 
Timmy Gusto. And I, I don't know, man. That's who I am. And it's a character. It's a delivery system. It's an Italian. I'm, I'm embracing my Italian side. I'm throwing the Jewish side in the trash. Not to be, you know, I know that sounds kind of fucked up to be like, fuck my Jewishness. Uh, but it doesn't, it, I'm not Jewish. Passes through the mother. My dad is the one where I got the genes from. So I'm tired of, I, I give up on identifying as Jewish. I'm sick of having the conversation that's inevitable. Whenever someone asks, are you Jew? You have a Jewish last name. I go, yeah, I'm half Jewish. They go through the mother or the father. So they could, they just love slam dunking. When they find out that it's through the father, they go, oh, then you're not Jewish. Well, I, I'm taking, I'm throwing up the white flag on that one because I think it's not worth the battle to get into like genetics and like how race, how Jewishness is a race, not just a fuck stupid religion. Like who cares about their, so you, so you give a fuck. It just brings up all this fucking baggage. It's like, yeah, I know that it passes through the mother, but I... I am still genetically pretty fucking Jewish. And that carries its own attributes. Like, you know, Jews have different genetic attributes that are not just like big noses. It's deeper than that. So I, I give up on that. I'm no longer Jewish. I rescind my Jewishosity. Of course, I'm still going to act like a Jew. I'm still going to be like cheap. You know, I'm, I tip well. But I'm still going to be, like, stingy. I'm still going to complain about the temperature. You know, I'm still going to be vengeful and, author like, business savvy and good at running shit, you know. But I'm not going to identify as Jewish anymore. I'm going to identify more as Italian because that did pass through the mother. And so Timmy Gusto is my new identity. It's a very harsh sounding name, so I don't really love it still, it, you know, but it's who I am. I'm going to print t-shirts. I'm going to sell t-shirts based on the Gucci logo because it's the same exact letter of number of letters. So I'm going to design a t-shirt that says Gusto in, in that cool font, and I'm going to form a posse. I need people in my entourage to keep other people the fuck away from me. I don't like other people getting in my, in my business. I don't know, man. I, and I hate telling people that I've been doing comedy nine years because it doesn't look cool to say that at an open mic when you're number 29th on the list. It's like, yeah, man. Yeah, I've been doing this nine years. Yeah, I'll be up in about two hours. Yeah, man, I'm going to kill. I'm going to do such a hot three. Yeah, man. Oh, man, the host, they're going to be like, oh, this guy here, yeah, this next guy, Timmy Gusto, that's all they're going to say because they don't know me because, hey, I'm not very well known yet. Nobody has heard of me or anything. Yep, nine years, solid. Yep, never quit, never took any break except for COVID a little bit, but I still did it even then. So, yep. In a, yeah, Chicago is where I did it. I cut my teeth in a real city nonstop pretty much. So, I sh so, yeah, I should probably not be here. I should probably be doing like a, like gigs more often. And it doesn't show that I've been doing it nine years because I go up there and bomb a lot. But, hey, yep, I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I'm not a liar. Nine, yep. <laughs> So I don't like telling people that because they always have like a double take. They go, oh, nine years. Holy shit. I've only been doing it for like three. And I'm better than you. And I go, yep. But you know what? Fuck those people. You just got to like, I guess I just got like, it's too late to quit stand up. Uh, stand up. Everybody should quit. Like stand up shouldn't even be a thing anymore. Like nobody really likes it. Like 10 people like it. I mean, how many people really watch Netflix specials? Maybe like 100,000, maybe a million, you know, whatever. I didn't even see the last Dave Chappelle one. I don't give a fuck about stand-up. I only watch people do stand-up if I want to see how they deal with something very difficult. 
I don't want to watch it when they're doing well. It's like, oh, look at this guy. Ooh, he's getting a bunch of laughs. Easy. Making it look easy because everybody's like there, like you clap me, supporting. Eh, that's fucking boring, man. And I could do that. Like, I've done well at shows and open mics, but even then I go, eh, what, what am I doing? Just showing off that I'm funny? Whoopee. I'm funny. Whoopee. I don't know, man. I guess funniness is a skill, but like nobody really gives a fuck if you're funny. Everybody's funny. Everybody could just pull up their phone, show a SpongeBob meme, and it's way funnier than Tom Segura. Sorry, Tom Segura, beer. You're just not killing it compared to. Uh, no, he is. He actually is funnier than most memes. So I guess, I guess, I get. I guess if you're like in the top. Point one percent of stand-up comedians, then you are gold. You're like worthwhile. But even then, I have not watched Tom Segura's latest special. I'm more of a Burt Kreischer guy. I like bro humor. I like that type of shit. And so I gotta keep going because there is a end. There's a light. It's about it's about the journey. You can't be all hung up on like, oh, I got to stop being an open. I got to like make it to the best comedy club and be a headline. It, it's about the journey because like it's not so bad. Like you got to enjoy the present moment, especially if you want to do well at a show. You can't just be focused on what you're doing 10 years, like what you're trying to chase after. But that said, I usually do better if I have something to look forward to, like, right after the set. Like, if there's somebody there that I'm hanging out with and I get to look forward to hanging out with them after the show, that helps. Or if I have, like, a hot date afterwards, that helps. That's been, I've, I've been there before. I've had dates before, and that usually guarantees i'm tr probably gonna have fun on stage because i'm excited to go to a fucking to fuck somebody afterwards that's what a hot date is it's where you know you're gonna fucking get your dick sucked or at least well maybe not that but like because she that particular one i'm thinking of she didn't suck my dick she did not do that she was too good for that fucking i regret it Nah, I was fine, but I don't think we had sex even that night. I think she discovered I was a Trump supporter and, and uh, decided not to fuck me ever again, actually. I think that's... But I still did well on that set, I think. So you gotta, you gotta take things in stride, you know. I don't know. I'm starting to get, like, a big head a little bit, uh, which, you know, sometimes you kind of... It's deserved, like, it's earned. I earned it by being funnier than a lot of people or being funny and whatever it's not a competition but it is it's a, it is a competition so I, i'm getting a big head where i go to these open mics and I, I i i look at the comics and i go man do they suck i should be up there before like right now why am i waiting two hours uh but then i go up and i don't do that well so it levels my ego i go oh okay maybe i i'm not but i am funnier than most people actually it's just that i don't have the confidence or the there's other factors, like if, I don't know, man, like there's always, you got to have jokes, you got to have poise, you got to have delivery, you got to acknowledge something. If something weird happens before you go, you kind of have to acknowledge, Can't you, you know, that'll fuck you up. You could have really good jokes, but if you go up there and the vibe is fucked up because something happened and you don't acknowledge it in a way that's sufficient... Those jokes will fucking bomb. And it has nothing to do with the jokes. It's the it's the vibe of the room. So, but still, I got to get out. I got to work harder to put my... I got to stop being afraid to try to get booked for gigs. Because they're not going to come to me unless I'm famous. Even then, they, they don't give a fuck. Like, if you're just famous, like TJ Miller, he's famous. Do people book him? 
Not after the whole weird fucking shit that he did with the bomb threat. Like, I don't know if he gets booked that often. I think, I have no idea. I assume he has an agent still. Because once you have an agent, they just do the bookings for you. But if you don't, you got to be your own agent. Maybe I should just hire an agent instead of, like, waiting around until I'm qualified for them to come to me. Maybe I should just throw my money around and well, I don't know. It sounds like a scam, though. You can't just pay for somebody to be your agent. That's not how it works. They take a percentage. That's why it's tough. You got it. So yeah. So that's not how that works. So, but if I had an agent, I would love to just not have to deal with the uh, trying to get booked. I could just have them deal with the rejection. I won't even hear about the rejection. It's like, yeah, they didn't. We sent them a clip, and we didn't. You know, they didn't hear we. We didn't hear back. Meanwhile, they probably actually did hear back, and they said a lot of bad things about me, but my agent is a nice person who's smoothing it over. Whatever. I would be a great agent. Fuck being a stand-up comedian. I'm too good at other shit. Like, I, I'm good at talking to other comics out of killing themselves because they're tormented by their careers or lack thereof, their pain that they're going through. I'm very good at being a mediator between parties and telling them, you know, if don't worry about it. No, do this. Do you're doing, you should probably like, I won't tell them what to do, but I'll give them my opinion in a way that is, you know, it doesn't come off as obnoxious advice. Nobody, no comics like to be told what to do. Like somebody, whatever, I don't know who gives a fuck. But you shouldn't put all your material online. Isn't that a common, isn't that an obvious thing? Like if you're trying to sell tickets, don't put your entire set on YouTube. That should be a pretty basic thing because why would they want to buy tickets to you if you're going to do all the same jokes that you already have on YouTube, you know. I don't put any stand-up on YouTube because I don't film myself. If I filmed myself, I would definitely put it on YouTube at this point because I'm good enough to where I sometimes have funny moments that are not just, like, amateur. Like, they're funny enough to, to be seen on TikTok or whatever. But these would typically... The, what you would put on that is crowd work or improv riffs that you're never going to do again. That's perfect for YouTube because it showcases that you're funny. It's promo, but it's not material. It's not something that you're burning up. You get it? So, man. Anyway, I'm not pissed anymore. I was pissed kind of when I started when I started this. I was cursed. I was saying the F word a lot. But then I started, when I, when I got tired, and now I'm, like, fatigued again. Thank you uh depression thank you clinical depression i don't know it's weird how like my energy levels just go up and down up and my mood goes up and down okay let's take off the stupid shades what is this uh, here's what yeah i guess i look i like the way i look with the shades who doesn't everyone looks better with sunglasses on that's why people wear them so another thing that pisses me off is when people touch me i have a trigger it's uh and this is a pretty typical thing, I think, is to not like when people that you don't know touch you. And like in a certain, like somebody came up to me at an open mic that I've seen around. I've seen him before, but I am not friends with him. And he's like put his arm around me and like got like very up close and personal. And I didn't like it. And then later on, he comes and like rubs me on the fucking belly. And that, I don't know what the fuck that was about, but that is an absolute trigger because it to- it's like gives me, it brings me back to this PTSD of when like this uh, a comic assaulted me or whatever, like groped me from, in- from Chicago, some piece of shit <laughs> that went around assaulting male comedians. I was friends with him because I looked up to him, and that's how, you know, that's how there was like a power dynamic. 
he was more established than me. So I just put up with the, the fucking groping. And it's pretty creepy and fucked up. But that was before the Me Too movement. So people kind of didn't really care that he was like a predator because it was only men. And that was before Me Too. So especially, even if it was with women, they probably still wouldn't have. I mean, you know, that's why, that's when Me Too, that was a reason for Me Too, is because men were getting away with that shit. And he was getting away with it. And he was very well accepted in the scene. And like all these fucking hypocrites were friends with him who probably would no longer think it's cool all of a sudden. I didn't think it was cool. I just hung out with him because he was more established. And uh, so that when that dude touched me on the belly, it totally brought me back to the fucking, I guess, what do you call it? It's like a light trauma of being groped by this creepy gay guy. Happy Pride Month. <laughs> Gotta talk about predators that happen to be gay on Pride Month because, hey, what can I say? Some of them are, not all of them. Of course, I've met other gay people that were not fucking predators. But this guy fucking ruined it for the rest of them. Just these minority of shitty people really ruin it for the rest of these other people that are doing nothing wrong. Namely, like these toxic women, these amber herds going around pretending in a line and about f shit that didn't happen to fuck over a man that did nothing wrong they're horrible and they make a bad name for the female race just like gay people that assault people make a bad name so anyway i, I don't like being touched even if you know me that's just a bad place to be touched on your fucking belly it just makes me feel like a child it just makes me feel very vulnerable it's a vulnerable area to touch i would never do that to somebody you know like hey let me pat your belly like i'm not even fat i get i would get it maybe if i was like fat and like you're rubbing it for good luck you know like buddha but i'm not buddha i'm white i don't look anything like the guy so that's something that piss me off dude so i do comedy as often as humanly possible but in the downtime since there's nothing you know since comedy doesn't always happen like at eight in the morning so i spend a lot of time watching instagram reels that's most of my life right now just watching cakes being made you know like pieces of wood being cut by machines People jumping and doing backflips off of shit. And I don't know if that's helping me become a comedian. It's kind of a waste of time. But also, I don't have the energy to do anything else. Because if I'm sitting up, I, like, I, like even this podcast, which I look forward to and enjoy doing, is taking a lot of like an effort for me to just be sitting upright and talking. So I have chronic fatigue, and that sucks. And it's not, I don't know what you do for that. Maybe exercise. I don't know. I think exercise actually makes it worse. So I'm fucked, and I got to work on that. I got to do something because, like, that's what's holding me back, myself, my own pain, chronic pain. You don't know how much pain you're in until you take morphine. Like, you know, you might be lying and you might be very relaxed and not think you're in pain. But then you pop a fucking morphine pill and you go, okay, never mind. Life is painful. I, I, should, I, I get why people get addicted to this shit. But not to be too uh, negative. What happened that was positive else that I could talk about? Here's one more negative thing. <laughs> I'm tired of people telling me I look like a serial killer. Like, I, you know, if it was something that just started happening, maybe I'd be like, oh, that's exciting. I look like a serial. That's cool. But it's, but it's been actually, it's been happening my whole life. Like when I was nine, this girl that was very like popular would only come up to me and say hi to me. And that's, that's it. And I later found out the reason that she made an effort 
to say hi to me but not be my friend or anything else was because she was afraid I was going to bring a gun to school. How do you? Oh, what a fucking a, what a compliment! It's like, so that's why you're, so you're the you're the most like pretty, like popular girl in the school, and you're going up to one of the most unpopular kids because you're afraid he's going to murder you. I get it. I get. I get it. She was just trying not to get killed, I guess. But like, I didn't even know that school shootings were a thing, because like they they just started happening. Like that was like a that was like a novel thing. I was like nine, I think, at the time. So that was right around when Columbine happened. So I guess she was worried I was gonna copy Columbine, but she was pretty. She was thinking pretty ahead of her time because. School shootings were not really a thing back then. Now they are. Now I get it. I look like one of those people. But it is very offensive to say to somebody, you know, hey, you look like a fucking mass shooter. It's like, yeah, I do. But, you know, it's not that funny. Like, it is kind of like a rude thing to say to somebody. And, like, try telling that to a black person. Like, it's not, it's definitely a white stereotype. So you're being kind of, like, racist on top of that. It's just a racist thing. That, I don't know, racist. It's just a thing that's a white stereotype. Meanwhile, I mean, who commits more murders, white people or black? Like, who kills more people, white people or black people? Not to be, like, a statistician that's, not to, like, go down, like, a controversial, you know, hot-button topic but like i'm pretty sure there's more like uh i don't know about mass shootings but like more shootings occur by uh not white people and i <laughs> i do carry a gun a, a lot because this is texas and you're allowed to it's like legal to bring a gun to like most places so i kind of do and i've never felt the need to even think about using it or killing somebody and i don't think i ever will i kind of think i'm a good person and like not violent <laughs> like i don't really see myself ever snapping you know even though like hey i could see why people would i could see why i would i think i i could see why i would because like women to call me a school shooter and don't fuck me because I'm short. So, like, th those are two, like, on top of being invisible to women who could solve my, you know, make me happy, they also tell me that I'm going to shoot them. So, like, that, like, that is a reason to hate them, kind of, <laughs> like, but I don't. I don't hate women. I resent them. Most, like, a lot of them, like, the ones that, like, treat me shittily. Like, people, like, ask me why I'm so, like, afraid of women. It's like, well, they say shitty things. They're shitty to me. Like, I don't know. Would you keep going? Would you go up to somebody that just, like, says rude shit? Like, so I don't ever go up to women, like, ever. Unless they run an open mic and I miss my spot. And I go, can I still get up? I'm sorry that I'm talking to you. I would never do this normally. It's just that I plan this. I put time into coming here. Like, I try to avoid at all costs talking to a woman. Maybe a cashier. I'll be like, where do I put my credit card? Like, I don't know. I'll, I'd never make small talk because I just know how to read a room. So I hate women, and uh, so anyway, but I would never snap. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I've never really, like, I have gotten extremely mad and, like, raised my, you know, yelled at people, but I've never, I don't do violent shit. So having a gun, the only reason I have that is just in case somebody else is in mortal danger. And there was, I was at an open mic last, two days ago, and there were gunshots right outside the open mic. Excuse me. Uh, right outside the gates. The premises. That's a technical term for, you know, as a gun owner, you got to know the 
the place you're allowed, you know, premises is a place that sometimes you can't bring a gun. So anyway, there's a bang, bang, bang. It sounded like, like, you know, I don't know if it was sounded like a gun or if it was fireworks, but I guess people thought it was a gun because they started like running away. <laughs> they started exiting the venue and I was like, eh, it's far enough away where I don't, you know. And also, I had a gun on me. So I was like, I don't know, I'm fucking ready to fucking go. If somebody fucking, if there's an active shooter, I'm one of the people that are have to stop it. Because the cops aren't going to fucking come fast enough. And also, I was, I didn't get up yet. I was on the list. I, had, I was going to do my set. I don't give a fuck if there's a gun. There's a somebody getting shot there. Who gives a fuck? So I I didn't fucking flinch a muscle. I was just like, oh cool, gunshots. I don't know. I'm from Chicago. That's so normal. So, but a bunch of people left, and I was like, yeah, if there's a if there's a gun person shooting people, I will shoot them i don't know i wasn't gonna go out there and look for trouble but if trouble comes to me yeah having a fucking gun on you makes you feel kind of safe not invincible obviously but it's like okay i could kill seven people at, at at least you know that's how many bullets i have on me i need to carry more ammo in case i need to kill more than that but anyway but other people definitely are not comfortable with guns. So I try not to talk about it too much because they I feel like they're just going to get afraid and like run away from me. Like, please don't shoot me. But like it's like, I won't. Uh, don't worry. But yeah, you got to kind of don't tell people. You kind of It's like a don't ask, don't tell situation. It's like, are you... Like, I don't ask people if they're gay. Like that guy that rubbed my belly. I don't know. Maybe he was into men maybe that's why he touched me but like i don't give a fuck it's a rude thing to ask even if they're groping you or whatever like touching now nah, he wasn't groping me but like i don't care if he's gay i just don't like they touch me women can touch me that way that's different but even then it's kind of rude like a woman once touched my uh shirt she was like what kind of shirt is that or something it was yeah and i was like i don't i don't know i forgot what it was that i was wearing that she touched but like i for some reason i didn't like it because it was like an entitled women privilege moment and i hate anyone that uses their privilege to do something that other people can't do when it comes to like gender different like, like i guess i don't mind privilege in general like if you have a private jet by all means, use it. You know, if you have a motorcade because you're a VIP and you're blocking intersections, fuck it. You're a V. You're, I don't give a fuck about that. I'll wait. But speaking of privilege, I have it. I'm a very privileged individual. Some of it was earned. Some of it was bestowed upon me by having good parents, you know, like a two, like a nuclear household with parents that loved me and both had jobs. Had I had a good upbringing, I had a safe childhood. I was not molested or anything like that. So that's why I don't really feel like I deserve a career. Is because like, hey, why do I don't deserve success in comedy if I had a easy life? But as but then you know that was just my childhood. And then I became a five foot three adult. So now I feel like the world owes me something because, like, hey, it's true. It's kind of like people kind of don't want to fuck short people, and like the word, hey, that's a disproportion right there. That's an asymmetry that I'm gonna cash in. I gotta start capitalizing on my victimhood of being a midget. I have to. There's a lot of room for material there. The struggle of being short is pretty un like untalked about territory. Like people obviously complain about it on like incel communities 
And they have a right to because it's fucking true. Women, I mean, I hate to sound like a fucking complainy victim because I don't really mind that. Like, it doesn't bug me that much because I'm used to it. And also, f- women are dumb. Who wants? I don't want to talk to women that all the time. I don't want to just be hit on a woman just by looks alone. So I don't really mind that much. But I should use it to my advantage because there's material, there's material there. And so I do deserve a career in comedy because society looks at me as a little shrimp and it wears me down. So I should, I do deserve a career is what I'm trying to say. And Prince did it. Prince, he was five foot three. Or 5'2", even shorter than me. And he compensated for it by being Prince. I'm not doing jack shit to compensate for I mean, okay, sure, I have a house. I'm doing well financially in some regard. I'm not killing it, but I'm doing... I did okay last... I had a good year. Anyway, so I should... That's why, I've, that's why I'm... I guess I do compensate for a little bit. And I I am funny, I guess. I guess if I wasn't, I don't know. I'm funny because I'm half Jewish. That is is a genetic thing. I was always funny. Also because I'm introverted. You don't have to be Jewish to be funny. You also have to be introverted, I think. Extroverted people, they're not as funny because they're good at talking to people. And that usually means you're normal. If you're good at talking to people, like getting along with people, like being the life, like just effortlessly communicating with people and they don't judge you for saying weird shit, that's not funny. It's the introverts that are hiding away from social interaction because they have different ways of thinking and so they end up saying weird shit. And that is why they, they're introverts. It's one of the reasons they don't like talking to people. And so I am I am funny and I got to work on being it more often like in public i should try to like be funny more often i guess i've had a few good sets in the past week that i like i did okay at a few places whatever i did okay in plano so it was worth a four-hour drive there and back um and i even got paid for it so it was a paid spot thank you to ryan joseph um, you got to find your people, you got to lie to them, no, you got to be genuine, like, nobody likes a sycophant who just uses people to get things, like, they're cocks, like, I don't like being used for sex, that's why I don't really, like, respect people that do that to me, <laughs> like, if somebody does that, yeah, that it's not a good way to begin a a relationship with me is by only using me for my body and then tossing me like disregarding me after that that's a not like you know i could could have said no but it does negatively impact (laughs) you know how i view them doesn't make me like respect them doesn't make me hate them i don't hate anybody somebody asked me if I hated them, I was like, you can hate me, it's okay, but I didn't mean to blah, blah. It's like, I don't know you enough to hate you. Like, it's such a, like, self-involved, like, you're thinking too deeply into it. Nobody fucking hates you. You just say weird shit that kind of rubs people the wrong way, so they react. I don't know, if, I don't hate the person. I don't hate the person I'm thinking of. Um... So we covered the thing I wanted to cover. So the gunshots, walking around with a gun. And I hate explaining to other comedians, which ha- this happens all the time, where I live and what I do for money. I live in a very unheard of part of Texas. I don't live in Austin, so I can't say the neighborhood They'll be like, okay, never heard of that because it's new and it's outside of the city limits. So I can't say the neighborhood. So, and I can't say the community. Like, 
it fucking is annoying. So I just say, yeah, I live 10 miles east of the city. And they go, okay, where? Like, where? And I go, it's in a new development called blah, blah. It's by the blah, blah. And then, so that's annoying. And then they go, so do you live, here? Do you live in your car? And I go, no, I don't live in my car. It's just that I don't know how to explain where I live. And I don't like explaining what I do for money, which always, of course, that's a common thing to ask somebody. It's like, what do you do for a living? It's like, well, nothing. I made a lot of money last year and I don't have to work right now. Eventually I'll have to work, but like right now I'm just doing comedy and I'm, I'm a coder and uh, I'm better than, like it just comes off as like, yeah, I'm successful. So what do you want me to say? Like, yeah, you're, I, I don't, I have more than $500 in my bank account. Uh, <laughs> I know what it's like to have five figures on hand sorry so i don't like explaining myself i kind of it is kind of fun actually it's to say that actually of course i take some pleasure in telling people that i'm better than them at that i'm better than them that i'm more financially well off than them i wouldn't be talking about it so often if i did i wouldn't have brought it up on kill tony which I did the second time in front of Ari Shafir. I did bring a fucking five ounce bar of gold, you know, to kill Tony. So I guess I am still flaunting my little bit of success. So I guess I do enjoy it. It's just awkward. It just makes me feel like a dick when I'm not trying to do that. I do it as a joke. It's like, hey, look at me. I'm a dude. I wear sunglasses inside. Ooh, I'm a douche. But when I'm just trying to relate to somebody or make friends with some other comic, I just don't like telling them, yeah, I've started a business. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you, you yeah, it's just awkward, man. It's like, so I got to keep hanging out with people on my level. I got to keep impressing people that are like a little bit more, I don't know, man. I don't know. So I'm, I guess I'm not as pissed off as I thought I would be. Like, it becomes very, like, redundant and, like, you know, like, gratuitous to just be, like, negative all the time. To be like, fuck Austin, I'm the best. Ugh. I don't really have that ego right now. Uh, and, I, and if I do, it's usually short-lived because it's only a matter of time before I make a dick out of myself. Uh, but everything I said, I'm proud of. I haven't done anything that I regret on this podcast. I I need an entourage, though. It's cool to show up with a bunch of other people to a comedy thing, especially if you're, like, a little bit late. Hey, I'll be honest. I felt very cool when I showed up in the at the Plano gig with Hans Kim. That that Hans. Sorry to keep saying his name, but we walked in at the same time, you know, because we parked my car. And so they were, like, looking at us walk in, and I could tell that they were fucking a little bit jealous that I was hanging out with him or whatever, that I showed up with him. But that's cool. That's, what it's, that's part of the fun of being a comedian is you sometimes get to feel cool that's i mean hey i earned it i've been doing this nine years i've been doing this podcast eight months almost and uh yeah i'm pretty uh low love pretty low energy right now i started off by yelling and cursing anyway let's who cares we don't have to do that much longer i guess that's it i had barbecue today very good barbecue place True, it, it was cheap, so I was very skeptical. It's called True Texas Barbecue. And if it's called that, what are the odds that it's really good, that it's True Texas Barbecue? It's like, oh, really? It's like, it's like a fucking haircut. It's like, I'm trying to think of a good example. It's like a fucking drug dealer saying, dude, I got the best heroin. And they actually have the best heroin. It's like everybody says that, but he really does. He sells himself 
as the true heroin drug dealer. And it's like he lives up to the name. If he's killed many people, his heroin has killed many people because it's that fucking good. You just can't stop doing it. You take a big dose of it because you want, because it's laced with fentanyl. Nah, it wouldn't be laced with fentanyl if it was actually good. So actually you wouldn't overdose on it. That's how good it is. You only need a little bit, but since it's so potent, yeah, a lot of people have overdosed on it. So there's the joke. Okay, we just got a new joke. To trim the fat off the joke, it's uh, so there's this place called True Texas Barbecue, and I was skeptical. What are the odds? that a place that sells itself as true Texas but would actually be good. That's like a heroin dealer saying he has the best heroin, and he actually does. It's like, dude, okay, his heroin is actually pretty good. It's, it's killed many people. All right, never mind. It's not a true, it's not a complete joke. I got to work on it. I got to fucking work on it. I'm not here to do jokes. I mean, But, like, you know, I got to step up my game. I'm still taking drugs called I'm still t- <laughs> I'm still taking modafinil which I got hip to somebody hips me to this new fucking new sexy drug uh that gets you like wake it, it gets you woke that's what it does it gets you fucking it turns you into a a liberal a leftist no it makes you very awake and kind of focused. It makes you want to be focused. It makes you want to put effort into shit. Not like Adderall. It's not as speedy. It's not speedy. It just makes you up. And it makes you very hard to go to sleep. But I like it. And it makes you smarter. It's a smart drug. And right now, I'm, not, I'm very clearly not on it. I'm like a zombie right now. It would be better if I had taken it, but I don't want to get addicted to that shit. It's very habit-forming, only psychologically. Not physically. You don't crave it, like, physically. But, like, you definitely go, like, I could be so much better right now if I had taken that fucking pill. And, you know, to be honest, I probably do need to be on it. Because I am a zombie. I sleep for like 16 hours a day sometimes. Ooh, man, I am clinically fucked up in the head. So I'm going to keep taking it. Maybe I'll even try to get a prescription for it. I'll just tell my doctor, hey, man, so I've been taking this drug, this street drug. Can you give me some for real, though? Can you keep, like, I've been abusing this drug that I've been getting illegally. Can you help me? Can you hook it up illegally so I can get it for even cheaper? I'll try that. I'll let you guys know how it works out. But anyway, I'm doing fine. You know, sometimes things get tense. Like I have a resting bitch face. I have a resting serial killer face. And like, I don't like that about me. And sometimes if somebody fucks with me, I don't let it go. Or I don't take it. I say something back that's mean. And you know, that fucks with people. And uh, sometimes I'm just in a gloomy... And sometimes it's just... I'm not in a playful mood, uh, and mushrooms help, but I, t- I took them two days ago or one day ago, not today, and like that after effect doesn't carry over to the next day. Like I did them yesterday, I took a big dose, and I, uh, a big, not a big dose, a tiny dose, but enough for me to feel it, and I, I uh, it was great. When it wears off, It just made me feel so alive and like it made me want to blast music and really enjoy it. But the next day I went right back to kind of being depressed and I hung out with somebody that's also very like going through something very rough and he's like claims to be like suicidal even and so it kind of brought me to a, it kind of rubbed off on me a little bit uh but i am i i like him he's somebody that i am rooting for to get through this dark moment i don't want him to I, like I, <laughs> obviously i don't want him to kill himself and uh i don't think he will 
And I will continue to support him anytime he needs me because that's the type of person I am. Once I like somebody and once I decide that this person is somebody I care about, I will be the person to uh, help them through whatever bullshit they're going through. But after a certain point, they got to reciprocate it too. I'm not just going to be somebody's uh, fucking rag. They're fucking piss rag. I don't know, man. Can't be a simp. Unless it's you're getting something out of it. Whatever. Life is complicated. Life is short. Life is messy. Nothing's clean. Like nobody has like a perfect life where they just have everybody likes them. Especially if you're successful. That's impossible. If you're successful, you've definitely pissed somebody off. So you just got to take it day by day. Try to get some enjoyment out of it. Try not to kill anybody, I would recommend. You know, I look violent, but that's just because it's, it's a white stereotype. I will never... St- here, mark my words. I will never maliciously, k- with intent, kill somebody. Maybe I'll accidentally kill somebody, but I can't predict that. I'm trying my best not to, but sometimes these fucking idiots on scooters just drive in the middle of the street... Sometimes people just walk in the middle of the street, and it's hard to see them at the last minute, and you have to swerve out of the way. But anyway, the point is, I'm not like a murderer or whatever. I'm not ever going to be a murderer, I don't think, you know? And I, uh, I hope that other people try not to keep doing that. I think it's a rude thing to do, to just commit a mass shoot. Like, that's a fucking rude thing to do. You're doing it for your... Just because you're fucked up. It's like, oh, I, uh, I'm not doing it. My life sucks. I'm just going to kill other people and then end my own life just to go out with a bang. Just because life feels so dull and I hate everything. It's like, be more creative. Like, if you're going to shoot something up, don't kill other people. Do something that people will be like, hey, that's kind of cool. Don't just do something that makes everybody like hate you. Just because you hate things, do something interesting, though. A lot of beautiful things come out of shitty lives. Strive to do something creative, even if it's destructive. Destroy something that isn't going to kill something. Like, I don't fucking know. Just be creative. I'm not going to give somebody an idea. Like, I'm not going to condone something else that's, like, also bad. But, like, I don't know. Something... Do something less hurtful to other people. Destruction's fine. I have no issue with destruction. The best, most cathartic thing you could do is drive a shitty car into the desert and start shooting it with a shotgun. That's cathartic. I don't know why. And I don't know why it has to be a car, not some other object. But for me... The most fun thing to do when I'm in a pissed off mood is shoot up a shitty Volkswagen. Have a good rest of your week, y'all. Be safe, be healthy.